Electrostatics, example of a uniform spherical charge. So we're drawing a sphere here of some radius r, and it has a uniform charge density throughout its volume, rho v. So the question is, the first question is, what is the total charge? Step one, draw the problem. We've already done that. Choose a coordinate system. Since our charge distribution is a sphere, it makes sense that we would choose spherical coordinates. We write the general equation. So in this case, the total charge is just a triple integral, a volume integral, where we're integrating the charge density times the differential volume. Now we write expressions for each of these terms. And this is where we have to get a little bit deeper into the spherical coordinates. Our charge density is just a constant, so rho v stays rho v. But our differential volume in spherical coordinates is actually r squared. And that's because the, this volume, differential volume, actually gets larger with radius as we go outward. Sine theta, dr, d theta, d phi. So we plug those into our original integral, and now we have to figure out our limits of integration. We're, limit, we're integrating over r, phi, and theta. So in terms of r, we want to go from the center and integrate all the way out to the outside of our sphere. So we're integrating from 0 to capital R. Those are our first limits here. Now for phi, we want to integrate all the way around, so from 0 to 2 pi. And those are the limits we have here, 0 to 2 pi. And then theta, we have to go 0 to pi. So we're going from 0 to pi. Theta goes from 0 to pi. OK, well, that was a lot of work. But now we're ready to perform this integration. So there's our integral. And the first thing I'll do is group together that integral over r. And we see we need to integrate r squared dr. So the antiderivative of r squared is r cubed over 3. We'll evaluate that at capital R and then subtract that same expression evaluated at 0. And we really just end up with r cubed over 3, which is now a constant that we can bring to the outside. And that's what we've done here. Here's our capital R cubed over 3. Next thing, we can isolate our integral over phi from 0 to 2 pi. This whole expression will just become 2 pi. The antiderivative is phi. We evaluate it at 2 pi and then evaluate it, evaluate it at 0. So that's just 2 pi, which we can also bring to the outside of the integral. And what we're left with now is to integrate sine theta. So here we are with sine theta. The antiderivative of sine theta is negative cosine theta. And then we evaluate that and subtract it at the limits of the integration. And finish our math. And we finally have an expression for the total charge. And if I look at this expression, it's the charge density times 4 pi r cubed over 3. Well, it turns out that is the volume of the sphere, which leads to a conclusion. If the volume charge density rho v is constant, the total charge will just be rho v times the volume. And this is a better expression because it really doesn't matter what the shape of that charge distribution is. We can still write an expression to calculate total charge. Now, if that charge density were a function of position, we can't write this. And we have to evaluate it using the integral. On to the electric field. Now, due to the symmetry, we can evaluate the field at any point and it will just be a rotated case of any other point. So for convenience, let's pick an observation point along the z-axis. So it's a height z above the origin. And whatever the answer is here, it will be the same answer as over here, just pointing in a different direction. And we get that just from the symmetry. 
So step one, draw the problem. We've done that. Step two, choose a coordinate system. Let's stick with spherical. Write our general equation. So we go to the table back in our recipe for doing this, and we have a triple volume, triple integral for volume. And the argument is essentially the same expression as the field around a point charge, just modified for a differential volume. And that gives us our total field. Now we need expressions for each term in that integral, and then later the limits of the integration. So due to the symmetry of where we've placed it, you imagine we have a, a little differential charge here. It would induce a differential field in this direction. Now, if we rotate around to the opposite side, it would induce a differential field in this direction. And in fact, all of the components end up canceling after we integrate all the way around, except for the Z component. So at this observation point, we will only have a Z component. And in fact, we can ignore the other components due to the symmetry. So, Here's our new integral that we need to evaluate. We brought rho v over four pi to the outside, and we still have our ar over r squared and the dv inside here. And we will use these symmetry arguments to evaluate this integral. So here's our integral. Let's solve it and go term by term. So first, the constants on the outside, they carry over. Our triple integral carries over. Our 1 over r squared, where the capital R is the radius of our sphere, that carries over. Our dv carries over. What we need to think about is this ar component. That is a unit vector pointing in the same direction as this vector r. However, due to the symmetry, we said we can ignore all the components except the z component. So this is where we do that. We drop the other components and only retain the Z component from AR. Now for brevity here, I'm going to skip the, the math here, but it's just like all the other examples we've been working where we, we put in our limits of the integration, we work the integral until finally we get an answer. And we have two different R's here that I just wanted to point out. The capital R is the radius of the sphere, the little r is our distance from the origin in spherical coordinates. Now I want to rearrange this answer a little bit. And I'll leave the 1 over 4 pi out on the left and a 1 over little r squared on the right and lump together the other terms inside parentheses. And if we remember from our work on total charge, this is the total charge q. So in fact, when we recognize that, this would be our final equation for the total field around that spherical charge. Well, looking at this, this is the exact same equation for the total field around a point charge. And in fact, they are the same equations. A spherical charge, as long as we're outside of that spherical charge, looks just like a point charge to us.